you are the most valuable asset in your business. It doesn't matter what your business is. If you're running it, you run, um, it's yours. It's um, one of the things a lot of people don't understand. I've seen so many people set up businesses in their wife's name, brother, brother-in-law's name, etc. And assume that somebody else will run it to the same level they will. Reality is, they won't. Uh, very likely they'll run it into the ground a lot of the time it's just a showpiece where they just go I own my own business no idea how to run it no interest in really running it don't want to put the commitment you you need to do it um, so as such the business is going to fail so realize that from the get go this is your business this is your baby this is your retirement fund your uh, enterprise whatever it is it's yours um, and never take your eye off that ball. Um, this is why when we come to Europe, I mothballed our call centre. Now, all my staff are in other call centres at the moment, and if I opened up tomorrow, I know they'll transfer it back. You've probably seen the way we run the business. People actually like working there. Um, now, it wasn't an easy decision to make, but what happened was we had the earthquake, then we had a typhoon, then we had a um, delivery where we, t we basically invested our spare cash because we had a, such a good year in aid projects. So we were supplying uh, some funding for water to go to other islands. We ran convoys up to the north of Cebu. Um, we bought all the food and stuff that we – until basically we were pretty tight on cash <laughs> – um, which is why we, I ended up back in the UK, then uh, we made the move back into Europe, uh, taking the kids for education in Europe. But anyway, we also lost the internet, which is one of the key elements to the business, which um, is still not 100% now. We had four lines, we're down to one at the moment, which is actually a new line, uh, because the Philippines is notoriously bad for internet. But would that have crippled me back um, without the typhoon and um, earthquake? Answer is no. That's why we had four lines. We would just keep uh, cancelling contracts and getting new ones to get new equipment um, if that's what we had to do. Um, but there's fibre optic rolling in now, and this is the other key element. The, the technology is slowly developing, and I, I state slowly, um, but... The opportunities are there. They'll continue to be there, but you are the biggest asset. You need to understand how you're going to make it work. Spend a bit of time. Find out what people are struggling to get done. Um, this is a local thing here, to give you an idea. A friend of mine, um, he got married um, at, earlier on in the year. Now, his, him and his wife started a cleaning business. It was just one of those things. We thought, you know what, we'll start a business. And then he said, well, you know what, we should do a cleaning business. No thought really went into it, but it was actually a good business uh, opportunity. Obviously not want to work in the Philippines, but the whole point is here, they've seen a gap. And the gap was that the UK is full of people retiring. It's got an age problem. Um, there's not enough younger people in the country it's like when people go oh they're creating jobs in the uk they're creating nursing jobs for these old people um they're not um they're not uh economy generating they, they don't generate funds into the economy they utilize funds that are already there um but anyway that's another thing so their business was very basic model um and they've started, and today, because funny enough, I helped them um, develop their Facebook stuff and their business stuff online, and already they've got customers coming in today. They just had a new customer um, that is now a regular client, but that's how easy it is. They didn't invest a lot of money. They just invested a bit of time. They just went, okay, well, we'll do some cleaning. And then next thing is somebody goes, yeah, I need some cleaning doing. I need it two hours a week. Okay, I'll do that. Tuesdays and Fridays on the way home from work. And the next thing is the neighbor goes, I could do some cleaning as well. And it just builds up, builds up. 
And the other thing is they don't need to come out of their geographical area. People are retiring. The fact is that market is growing all the time where they are. Well, where anybody is in the UK. Um, so if you've got a business in the UK, I recommend cleaning. The other side of this being is a lot of these small companies don't want the, um, are no longer small. If you look at Doreen the Cleaner, Doreen the Cleaner, uh, five, ten years ago, started off working as a cleaner in another company. Um, she then started a business with her and her sister. Her and her sister then worked their way up to getting a couple of offices on the floor uh, and an office block. They then get the entire office block. They then get offered to do two or three office blocks in that area. And then they start building up till they get national contracts. And if you look like um, IS, not ISIS, but the ISS cleaners, they've now moved into facilities management, uh, which is the stuff I do, which is all the heating and ventilation, or I do the what they call hard services, the cleanings, the soft services. They've actually expanded into hard services. Why is this relevant? Because Dorian the cleaner is where these things start. Um, they start at the, the ground roots, but when they get up to that level, they no longer want those small contracts, and that's why you can pick these up. Um, my father did this with fire alarm systems for Gen. Many years ago, Gen wouldn't actually do some of these contracts. The, it wasn't worth their time. You know, you get an installation job for thirty thousand pounds. Not interested. They want the big airports. They're not interested in these poxy little jobs for only thirty grand a year. They're not interested in an installation for six thousand pounds. But I bet you would be. And that's how you can get started in that industry as well. There is always people wanting people to do the smaller tasks. Because these bigger companies, it costs them so much to process stuff and go through the rigmarole of getting somebody there, quote it, invoice it, do it. It's just not worth the time of day. But for you and me, it is. Because who does the paperwork? You do. Who does the maintenance? You do. And this is why there's viability in everything. Um, I've got a little bit off tangent on there, but the whole point there is there is opportunity everywhere. And the best person to find that is you, because you're, you already know what you can do. You know your capabilities. You know what's in your area. You know what you want out of life. Sit there and think how you're going to achieve it. Now, in the Philippines, like I said, the outsourcing stuff is still going to go there. But if you've got businesses in your neighborhood that are struggling to get somebody to do the accounts, how, how much would it cost for you to do an accounting course? Become a bookkeeper? Um, there's always something. The receptionist jobs. One of the most expensive things I found with businesses in the UK, because I've, uh, I've had my own stores in the UK, is business rates and rents. Um, having a high store, what do you call it, high street store in Worcester. It was a two-story restaurant. That cost £53,000 a year in rent and £56,000 a year in business rates. Horrendously overpriced. Um, but there's so many businesses that do pizza delivery, taxi services, all sorts that can be done remotely. And that's what you want to look at, is where there's opportunity. There is always something out there. All right, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.